Mwah. Wow. For those that know, this is my Supermoto. This is my 690 SMCR. I did a build series on this early on in the year, was it? During lockdown, we went through this whole bike. As you can see, loads of mods done to it. I'm going to talk you through some of the stuff I've done to this bike. I'm going to talk you through why you haven't seen this bike on the channel as much as I would have liked. So it's been a bit lacking, isn't it? People still ask me if I've even still got this bike. A bit like the Hope of Motard, people asking if I've still got it. I have. It'll be back very, very soon, by the way. But for this video, it's all about this Supermoto. So strap yourselves in, get yourself a cuppa, join me for a thrash around the countryside on this fantastic, amazing, fun machine. Drop C, roll the intro. I'm a little 690 project. For those that don't know, I purchased this uh, end of last year. I had this as a long-term loan. Oh my word, look at all this. Uh, I don't want to go for a whole cleaning exercise of this bike. So we're going to go a little bit slow through here. Those go, Chops, you're the supermoto, god damn it, man. Blast through that. For those that don't know, I bought this end of last year. Um, it was my long-term loan I had from KTM. I used to have a 701, bought it brand new back in 2016. Love that bike. So I've done a fair few mods to it. Not as much as I've done on this, but I did a few mods to it. Absolutely loved it. Womble bought one as well. He's still got his. Um, but then they ended up swapping the 701 because I really, really wanted a Super Duke. So there was a guy who was after a 701. We did a deal. I gave him my 701 plus the money and I had his Super Duke. The Super Duke was brilliant, but I really missed having a Supermoto. I really missed that 701. So I was lucky enough to go on the launch for this bike, the launch of the 690, which was in Portugal. I'll put a link to the video at the top as usual. That was fantastic and I loved it. Because I also, because I was missing the Supermoto so much, I built myself a 500 EXC Supermoto. And I've got a whole build series on that bike as well, which I'll stick at the top. So I've always, always loved Supermotos. <laughs> because of things like that, that you can't show on YouTube, but I've always loved them. They're just, it, there is no other bike you can buy which gives as much fun and, and giggles per mile as one of these. I'm recording this in September. We had the humongous rainstorm yesterday, as you can see. Yesterday, it came, the, this, is a, this is a road, this is like a dirt track. Yesterday we had a ridiculous amount of rainfall and today the sun is out but there's going to be a lot of grit, a lot of gravel on the road, a lot of mud, you know, got to be a little bit careful. With the Rotti kit you get, oh you get a lot more power, the whole rev range you get like 10-15% more power everywhere and torque. And I think actually you've got, at a lower rev range, I think you've got more like 30% more power. It's an incredible amount of torque you get to the bottom end with this Rotti kit on these. So punchy, so punchy. It's so punchy that now I have to run it with the traction control completely off. Because as you know, or you may know, oh look at this again. Oh, I don't want to get it dirty. I don't want to get it dirty. But as you may know on these, the traction control is built into the anti-wheelie. Why these bikes even have traction control really is a little bit beyond me. You don't really need it on a supermoto. You certainly don't want 
archaic wheelie control which is linked to your traction control you really don't want that but it has it when it was standard you know i'm going to talk a little bit about obviously wheelies aren't everyone's cup of tea but if you've got one of these bikes you've got to love your wheelies because this is what this bike excels at so to have the traction and wheelie control tied in is a bit of a shame but standard it will let you come up quite nicely and do wheelies with the traction control on very very good but since i fitted the rotty kit it's so much more aggressive the way the power slams in that it means that the, uh, the wheelie control cuts in a lot so you've got to really turn it off completely if you want to have a bit of fun and it's a little bit fiddly to even turn it off so yeah it's a little bit shame if, if there was a way if anyone knows of a way to permanently disable the traction control on this bike then let me know oh it's a little bit damn around here what a shame what a shame my hill got to get these tires better then what a shame my hill climb road is a little damp there are very very few bikes which would keep up with this up this hill climb honestly So as promised, let's just walk you through some of the things I've done to this bike, you know, since, first of all, since the build series, but also from the beginning. So changes since the build series, I now have the new Super Mo Fools uh, front light. So that the old one never had a low beam, it was just sort of high beam. If I turn this on, now on the low beam, you have a running light at the bottom. And then when you go high beam, you have the full high beam. Also, the inner LEDs here, on the old one, this is like a silver background, didn't look quite as, quite as cool. These are all blacked out now, and you've got the running light at the bottom. So, first thing is the new Super Mofuls LED headlight. Also, I've been banging on about this, the Barotech Companion. <laughs> Barotech Companion, let's call it. This gives you oil temp, revs, uh, outside air temperature, you know, warning lights. It doesn't have a gear indicator. I wish it had a gear indicator, but I've heard that there's a new version which does have a gear indicator now. So I might upgrade that for the one with the gear indicator because that would be really nice. We've also got loads of bling on this bike. SM Project bling here, 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 in there, here, here. We've also got Tecmo Carbon here, 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 and over there not only carbon bling but also their full titanium system titanium headers with the little expansion bit and on the rear the dual core titanium end can with the two dual dual outlets which you've heard that today you've heard that sing throughout this video that is with the baffles out it does come a little baffles and i think with the little baffles you'll be able to go on track and stuff but uh, not proven that yet moto master discs chain and sprockets also the big wave disc on the front. SM Pro wheels with the black and orange anodizing, the custom LCR hubs in Cerakoted burnt bronze. It's, uh, yeah, she's fully blinged out, this machine. There's no denying she's got a bit of bling. The new Michelin rubber, I can't remember the make of these, I'll pop it on the screen, but it's a dual compound, super sticky tyre now. I mean, look at that, it's fingernail in it, it's super, super sticky on the outside and a little bit harder in the middle, so I'll keep you posted what life I get on these, but uh, pretty impressed with them so far today. Other stuff on this bike, Rottweiler intake, full Rottweiler intake with the SAS Delete kit. We've also got full carbon fibre splash bait from P3 Carbon. Looking a little bit mucky, doing its job. Full titanium bolts from Race Fasteners. The whole bike is fitted with titanium bolts now, more or less. Cerakoted footrest done by my mate Adam. My A1 powder coating, one of my sponsors. I'm going to get some more stuff done by Adam. But yeah, fully Cerakoted foot pegs. Sticker kit done by Christian. 
at Crispy Designs. He's done me a full custom sticker kit. Seat done by Louis Moto. It's also got their soft gel padding in it and custom st <laughs> stitching. Oh, another thing, we've got the Vanishi. Vanish Motorsports aluminium fuel cap. So there's no key to get this out, you just unscrew it and screw it up. So Vanish, Vanish uh, fuel cap. I think that's about it. I think I've probably forgotten loads of stuff, loads of details, but I think that is really the basics of it. And it is a fantastic machine now. The performance is incredible. The performance on it is incredible now with that Rotti kit and the Power Command and everything. And it's just such a fun bike. I can never see me selling this, but when the Hyper Motard is finished, it's going to be very, very difficult to justify having two super motos I, I, I may not be able to keep this and the hyper i don't know we'll see how different they are but it could be a two bikes which are very very similar so let's see we're going to build the hyper up as best as it can be and then we'll compare these two bikes and see if i'm going to keep both of them or if one's got a good way but i'm loving the 690. The other thing which I love about these bikes, and I do live in a brilliant area for this, you know, there's a lot of little lanes around here, is you can basically take these bikes anywhere. So let's just go into Macaulay Moto a minute, and I'm just going to set a nice looped route around here, and it'll take me on the tiny little back lanes. Yeah, it's a bit wet today, they're going to be a bit mucky, but I think I've blown it now. I'm going <laughs> to... I'm going to have to go back to basics and give this bike a thorough deep clean anyway. Go on, Kalimoto. Oh, here we go. This looks interesting. 26 mile route. Start. Let's see where it takes us. And the beauty of this bike is it's great on the little lanes, you know, the little tight little lanes. And those roads are brilliant because there's no police, there's no speed cameras, and there's 60 mile hour limits. You've got to be careful because there's things like tractors, <laughs> horses, you know. So you can't go absolutely bandside. Is this a lane up here? Hilter's Lane. I'm going to go for a bit of an explore. I'm just going to go for a little bit of an explore, which again is a fantastic thing to do on these bikes. In these little lanes, absolutely perfect just to go and look and see what's up that road you've always wondered about it doesn't matter if the surface gets a little bit rough you've got the suspension to deal with it this bike does come with a quick shifter and blipper but i tend to use it not that often it's not the best quick shifter and blipper system and these bikes do have some inherent sort of false neutrals within the gearbox so if i don't use a quick shifter and blipper i very very rarely hit those but if you do use the quick shifter and blipper you will hit them more often right, and where on earth are we here it's saying left there but i'm going to go off piste here um no let's go this way let's go this way Riding down these lanes at <laughs> 60 miles an hour. It's the same as riding down a normal B road at 100 miles an hour. One of the other highlights from the build was the Barotech dashboard companion. You can just see it down there behind the phone. Oil temperature is a fantastic thing to have. I think I mentioned I think I mentioned that before. The oil temp is lovely to have on this. So I'm look at where I am. Selzy. Oh, we're here. I don't know where we are, it's saying turn right. Yeah, to have the to have the oil temperature is great, you know, means you because you know it's very important. I'm not gonna teach people to suck eggs, but it's very important. That you don't thrash your bikes when they're cold. <laughs> that sounds ridiculous, but if you want to get the maximum engine life out of your bike, don't cane it until it's fully warm. And it doesn't matter what your water temperature is doing, that's irrelevant. What's important is your oil temperature. And on the Baratech, you've got oil temperature, so I can see I'm 88 degrees on the oil. It's nice and warm, you can thrash it. And honestly, it takes fit a full 
15 to 20 minutes for the oil in this bike to reach temperature. 15 to 20 minutes until you can give it any stick from cold. That's, you know, if you're thrashing it before 15 minutes, you, you're prematurely damaging your engine. It's as simple as that. So I really like the Baratech with the oil temp. I wish more bikes had oil temperature and not just water temperature, but even on the double R, I don't thrash it until at least 15 minutes into the ride. You know, it's, uh, it's critical that. If you want to get the most out of your bikes, that is what you need to do. There you go. Sucking egg lesson over. Binderton, never, ever, 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 ever been up here. Yeah, perfect supermoto road. <laughs> it's quite important when you're on these little roads. You've obviously got to stay in the uh, in the tracks where the cars have been travelling. That, that's your line. Don't go anywhere else apart from the wheel tracks. Anywhere else you're coming off instantly <laughs> so you've got like a foot of tarmac you need to aim for I think this is part of why I love these little lanes because you've really got to be so precise with your riding I'm back here again now what was the point in that what was the point in that it's taken me straight back where I just was well there we go guys thanks for watching as always I, I just wanted to bring this out again you know we're at beginning of October now the summer's gone it is now autumn the weather's cooling down the rain's coming I don't know when I was gonna be able to get out on this again and I just wanted to bring out have a bit of fun show you I've still got this bike I've got no plans to sell this machine she's staying in the stable well depending how the hypermotard goes <laughs> Well, that'll be back soon. Hyper Motard will be back probably. You should hopefully see them in an episode within two to three weeks. There should be another episode. I'm trying to sort some stuff out as well. Um, as I say, it's been a year, a year since I touched that project. Probably a year and a half since I stripped it down. How am I going to remember how it goes back together? I don't know. But it's going to be entertaining either way, I think. We'll get there. We'll get there. I'm really, I want to do something really amazing with that bike now. All the head supported, as I mentioned. But I'm thinking now, go a little bit further. Get the uh, crank balance. Maybe a bit of blueprinting done. Well, I guess the blueprinting's been done already on the heads, isn't it? I've, but certainly probably get the crank balanced. I want to probably strip the whole engine now. And get all the engine crank cases fully Cerakoted by my mate Adam, A1 powder coating, because they do Cerakoting as well. So I've come so far, I've waited so long. Morning. I'm about to go the whole hog now. I've got a feeling I'm about to go the whole hog with that bike, but there'll be a first episode coming soon, and then we'll get into the whole engine stripped down. I may not do that myself. I don't feel confident enough to take the whole engine apart, you know, get it balanced and put back together. So I may be enlisting some help there. So I hope you don't think I'm uh, copping out, but I haven't got the tools, the equipment, or the know-how to fully strip that engine and put it back together. So we're going to be enlisting some help for that part of the project, but that part only. But there we go. Thanks for watching, guys. That'll be coming soon, and I'll see you on the next video. Cheers, guys which is full power. <laughs> <laughs>